Having done all the calculations, uh, we had uh, the baseline, in the baseline projection that we had earlier, um, the current account deficit was projected at around at 4.7% in 2020. And as we have said before, we expect the current account to remain around 5%. That is sort of a medium-term expectation, uh, current account deficit at around 5%. Now, having done the scenarios and uh, looked again at the mild and uh, moderate and extreme scenario, actually we revise our expectation to somewhere between 4 and 4.9% uh, of GDP. So you can see that there are compensating changes in our uh, balance of payments, and therefore the current account doesn't move uh, significantly, um, doesn't move dramatically. But there are some important elements in there that we need to watch, one of which is remittances. Remittances very much will depend on the duration of the crisis. Um, I think in the short term, you may not expect much change. Um, but I think the, as let's say, Kenyans in other, or the diaspora, um, if uh, let's say the crisis lasts long and they are jobless or the lockdown effects and things like that, um, all that obviously may lead to some uh, reductions in remittances. But at this moment, uh, we don't expect that to move uh, significantly. Um, now, there's also some other new transactions which are in the financial accounts. Um, and again, what happens in the financial accounts, a lot of that depends on the duration of the crisis. And for instance, but there are some new elements which I would want to mention. We expect some new flows in the very near term. And these are related to the crisis. And this relates to the, uh, let's say, IFIs, um, International Financial Institutions. So for instance, we are expecting emergency, we've, re, we've already made a request um, to the World Bank on emergency support related to the coronavirus that will be directed to, or to, to the Ministry of Health, the various operations that they are doing, the Ministry of Health. There is, the request has already been sent in, and therefore we expect something in the order of 50 million US, uh, US dollars um, in the very near term. We are also working with the IMF um, for emergency assistance. This is uh, assistance that doesn't have uh, the conditionalities of programs. This is emergency assistance. And, uh, and, that, and it is directed to emergencies like the one we are looking at and several countries are already um, have already indicated their interest, and Kenya has also indicated their interest in this. It may be something in the order of 350 million US dollars, and uh, a lot of this could be directed to budget support. We're also working with the World Bank um, to, in the context of their DPO for additional assistance there, uh, something in the order of 750 million US dollars. So these are all official flows, um, which will definitely, some of them were not uh, in our, on our radar um, just at the beginning of this year. Um, but uh, this obviously will are coming to support the operations that, uh, the emergency operations that are ongoing, and undoubtedly will also support our reserves and so forth. So, I think the point we are making here is that the balance of payments do, will not move significantly. If anything, we see, uh, we see compensating uh, changes and uh, that will leave us more or less um, a lot of where we expected to be at the end of 2020. I want to make three points uh, with regard to the foreign exchange market and reserves generally. First, uh, we do have adequate reserves. I think we mentioned it. It's mentioned in the press, uh, in, the, in the press, in the communique that we issued yesterday. 
um, the the reserves that we have and uh, U.S. dollars eight billion two hundred and fifty, um, something like um, a little more than five months of import cover, and uh, that is adequate to cover us and uh, as a, an adequate buffer against short-term shocks. But of course, we know that uh, we can get even much larger shocks. But uh, but we want to make up. And that's one of the reasons why we've always said that we do need insurance, and uh, this is why we have been working with the IMF to uh, put together a precautionary um, program uh, that would provide us some insurance against extreme shocks. So that's one point. The second point is obviously we've seen the financial market, uh, sorry, the FX market, the foreign for an exchange market has remained fairly balanced. But at the same time, we've seen some volatility in it. Um, for those of you that are watching the markets, you've seen how the dollar has surged against virtually all currencies. And so, yes, uh, we have seen in recent weeks a bit of a depreciation of our currency, of the shilling against the dollar. But there has been other factors that have also driven it. 